Notoriety comes in many forms. Leadership is recognized in a wide variety of ways. Definitions of success are as varied as the number of people asked to define it. But every so often someone comes along who is objectively, universally respected. Someone that everyone can agree makes the world a better place just by being in it. In this episode of Senior Spotlight, we travel to Washington High School, where one senior, who needs no introduction, is constantly proving there are reasons for the hype. The senior in the middle at 6'2", number 7, Jackalanga Mawinatunda. If you know anything about South Dakota high school athletics, you know her name. Starting at a forward is Volleyball, basketball, and track. She even ran cross country for a few years. She came to Washington as a sophomore, and she's been leaving impressions on fans, teammates, and especially her opponents ever since. Jacqueline working on Jaden Dunn. Nice move up and under. That is just unguardable right there for Jaden Dunn. Jacqueline gets her first points of the night. Hayes looking to go up the floor. Stops and pops from the free throw line. Off the mark. Washington looking to push the pace. Jefferson going to have extra help there on Jacqueline. Working on Jaden Dunn. Steps through. And she finishes up the rim. Another tough finish for Jacqueline. She was a key part of last year's South Dakota Girls High School Basketball Championship winning team. And again this fall on a volleyball team that took second in the state. Really good season, obviously. Um, went 30 and 2. Uh, didn't have the finish that we wanted. We lost in five in the championship, but um, you know, getting runner up is still a pretty good job. Um, a lot of people would like to be in our shoes. Um, you know, we started out the season uh, with some big wins. We we had a five set win early on against Lincoln, where we came back, um, and we didn't have Jack Linga um, for about the first half of the season. So for us to come out. Um, and start as strong as we did um, with one of our, our key players out um, was kind of a testament to our team and our group this year and just a really, really fun group. Um, I know I've had a, a lot of chances to talk about this group and um, just really fun and it's, it's a group that you're going to miss, um, but you take away a lot of things from a group like this. She overworked a little bit. Um, she had some things that kind of came up in the summer with, with a lot of the basketball stuff that she was doing um, and just kind of um, resting her a little bit more than anything. She didn't necessarily have an injury, but was kind of close. Um, so we, we had people that we could kind of fill in and uh, fill that role until we needed her. Um, so we just slowly worked her back because, um, you know, one thing that we tell all of our girls when we're at that point where it's either an injury or close to an injury is we want you in November. Um, you know, I think, you know, basketball wise, same thing. We want you in March. We want you in crunch time and at the end of the season. So. Um, we had the ability, like I said, to kind of not have her start um, and work her way back in and still have some success. She was still at practice every day, um, doing some, some rehab stuff, uh, you know, kind of strengthening the areas that she needed to and still um, very much a part of the team. You know, whether it was entering free balls or giving feedback or still watching the drills and being part of the drills as much as she could. Um, you know, because it was lower body, so she could still do some, some attacking stuff on boxes and those sort of things. So, um, yeah, very much still a part of the team. I really enjoyed uh, the volleyball season. I was bummed, you know, when we went to the state tournament and we lost in the championship. But, I, I mean, looking even from then, that game didn't define us because it was a really great season for us. The connection between the players, we could really, we could really get on each other this year compared to last year because we all wanted the same goal. Not that last year not, nobody wanted the same goal, but sometimes we'd have some days where it's like, oh, you know, this game isn't going well, oh, let's just give up. But this year it was like, no, we, we want to keep going, you know, those games where it went to five sets, it was like, we're not losing this game, we're going to win. So I think that was the, the competitiveness level of this team. Um, it was really just, it was really hot. An incredible season attributed to incredibly hard work. Not bad for someone who hasn't actually played that much volleyball. When she came over here, she was not a volleyball player. And uh, Coach Schroeder and myself have worked very hard to 
encourage the multi-sport participation. And that goes, you know, that goes to all of our coaches, but he and I have worked really closely together. And there was just that natural overlap between volleyball and basketball players, and the girls kind of talked her into it. And, uh, you know, she's a heck of an asset to the volleyball team this year, to be an all-conference player. And she's a kid who didn't even think she was a volleyball player when she came over here. As great an asset as she was on the volleyball court, as much as she's contributed to the Washington track team the past few years, this game is where her passion lies. We continue to improve every single day and we're working hard and I'm really enjoying the process with these girls. Um, it's, it's a little different from last year, you know, having a different type of uh, team, but we've learned to adjust to our system and we're, we're doing really well. This team is especially unique this year. Not only do they have a title to defend, they have a reputation to uphold. You know what, we're really lucky. We've got a great group of kids, and uh, I'm not just saying that because they're athletic and they're good basketball players, they're really good kids. And uh, if you're here in the building, you, you'll see that not just in the gym, but in the classroom. You'll see that in the uh, activities, student council, uh, and all those types of things. So we have, uh, like I said, we're really lucky right now. We just have a great group of kids top to bottom. You know, it's something that uh, I kind of feel like our kids pass down. It's not uncommon for that to happen for us. And uh, I, I can go back as many uh, years as I've been here. I look at uh, Sydney Arrington, I look at Anna Goodhope, uh, Maham Shaw, Samia Jamie, uh, Sydney Shetnan. Um, it's, it's kind of an expectation that uh, this is who we are and this is how we act. And uh, you know, when, when it's peer pressure, it's a lot easier than having that come from the mouth of the adult. We start out with just be a good human being, you know, be a good person, be a good example. And, um, you know, it actually starts for us the summer before basketball season when uh, those kids start coming to basketball camp. Uh, and we kind of lay it on them. I said, you know what? Some little girl that's going to come to our camp thinks that you are their hero. Some little girl, uh, this is going to be the best three days she's ever had. So make sure that you take advantage of that. Make sure that you treat these kids the right way. What's expected of me, um, especially from Parish is just to be a good leader and to be a representation of what we should be doing in practice as well as in games. Um, as far as my teammates, my teammates really just want the best for me and you know they encourage me just like I encourage them. We push each other. Um, there's not really any set rules or anything like that but we we know when when to get on each other and when to you know enjoy our, each other's time. So. Those bonds are strengthened when you spend multiple sports seasons together, share meals, and have opportunities to laugh together. We have like team dinners and we have team hangouts. A bunch of the girls uh, were underclassmen last year, so you know them coming back helps also like with practices to go faster, and we work hard in practice. And as well as you know, there's no, there's not really any problems on the team because we hang out with each other and we enjoy each other's company. So, for Washington High School, this is a formula that's working. For Jacqueline, it means some exciting next steps. Last summer, she committed to Texas, where she'll continue her academic and athletic career as a Longhorn. It was a decision that was years in the making. The recruiting process, it, it was a little while because it started back in like eighth grade. Um, I wasn't really highly recruited. I had a few colleges, you know, talking to me at that time. But I think it really started to expand and um, take off was like during sophomore year. Sophomore year they were sending letters, but junior year they were starting to talk. And um, I just started narrowing down my decision like junior year when I released my top 10. It was more of a decision for me to be able to focus on school and to be able just to um, really start figuring out where I wanted to go. It was a hard like decision to have a top 10, but once I made that decision, now I could start like really focusing on these colleges and figuring out where I really wanted to go. And then Texas, um, it just seemed like a really good fit. My, I had like a top three option um, before I chose Texas, but the reason why I chose Texas is because um, the coaches were really welcoming and warm. And, you know, looking at their practices and looking how they play, I really wanted to be in that system based off of that and how they push their 
how they push their players, but also how they support them and how the players push each other and they still work hard. So. You aren't continuously recruited by the top Division I schools in the nation unless you have proven your worth, and she has. Through AAU basketball teams and playing in tournaments across the country, through her exciting and tremendous high school career, ESPN currently ranks her as 34th in the nation among high school girls basketball players. And as amazing as everything she's accomplished is, if all you know about her is what you've seen on the volleyball or basketball court, you're not seeing the full picture of who Texas and innumerable other schools was recruiting. Obviously, she's a great athlete. Uh, if you're going Division I in any sport, really, you, you kind of have that. Um, but just really a good kid, uh, very kind-hearted, um, always positive, um, you know, just kind of that, that girl that you can tell she has some of that um, charisma on the floor um, as, a, as a player and as a person. Um, you know, she was always there to pick up a teammate, and she was never one that, that got down or yelled at anybody, um, but knew when to, to get after it. So very, very talented player. When you're that type of player, um, and you've been in a lot of those big situations, whether it's volleyball or basketball, um, and even track uh, with her, and a lot of the tournaments that she's gone to that have been national tournaments, um, you have that experience. Um, so just drawing on that experience is a big thing because nerves can always come into play. Um, and, and I think back to our state tournament, you know, Jacqueline didn't play half of the season, so she didn't have those reps built in like a lot of the other players did. Um, but you couldn't really tell because she was one that really stepped up for us those, those three games at the state tournament um, because of experience that she's had. The athletic accomplishments everybody knows about. Uh, she's very unique uh, to be 6'2". Uh, she can play the perimeter. You know, she's actually played all five spots for us this year, which is, I mean, that's unique in itself. Uh, the other unique things is outside of the gym, uh, she's just as impressive. You know, she's, uh, she's a 4.0 student. She's taken advanced placement courses. She's active in student council and the Black Student uh, Union. Um, she, even if she was not a part of our basketball team, she would be a leader in our building. And uh, like I said, we're just, we're glad to have her every day that we can have her and uh, lucky that she's a part of this. Student Council, Black Student Union. She works on Link Crew, helping freshman orientation at the beginning of the year. And she's been a big part of a new partnership between Washington High School and its feeder schools, like Rosa Parks Elementary, where she's spoken to students about leadership, the importance of being involved and invested in school, and where hard work can take you. Really just about um, working hard and being a good leader, um, as well as just, you know, continuing on the right path and being able to explore your different options. When you get to high school, obviously they're little kids, they're not, but even middle school, like doing different activities, not just, you know, setting yourself up for this one thing, trying other things and stuff like that, so. All of this added together speaks to the kind of character she'll take with her to Texas. Just how she carries herself. Um, you know, she's kind to everybody. She's always willing to give a helping hand um, with whatever it is, whether it's academic or, or athletic. Um, and that's really, you know, we talk about the warrior way and she's definitely somebody who, um, you know, shows all of those characteristics and, and she puts forth all four of those pillars. Um, you know, she's very good in the classroom um, as well academically. So um, it's not just the athletic side. Uh, that you see from Jacqueline, it's also that hard work in the classroom as well. It's just the things that she does outside of, of the normal day um, that people don't necessarily see. You know, the other thing that's cool is she's not going around and boasting that, she just does it. She doesn't necessarily need that recognition. During the summer, um, she was hurt a little bit and uh, basically did not play for us all summer long. She tried to do a little bit of volleyball because it was easier on her body. Uh, she tried to do a little bit of uh, AAU exposure basketball, but uh, the one thing that was constant is she made sure that her teammates knew that they were important. You know, when we took our kids down to USD to play basketball, she jumped in the car and came and sat on the bench and high-fived her teammates, and she made sure that she knew that, that, that everybody understood that that was important. It would certainly be tempting for a high school student who already knew they were going Division I to kind of take senior year off devote themselves to only one sport, or dial back academically or even athletically in preparation for that bigger role. But as you've no doubt already seen, that's just not the case with Jekyllinga. 
That's, that's one thing too that you can kind of see um, sometimes and you know fortunately for us and for, for Coach Parrish that definitely hasn't been anything that we've seen from Jacqueline. Um, you know she, she signed and made that decision um, early on and you know it was, a, it was a little bit of a fear for me as you know now that she's made that commitment um, for basketball does that mean you know volleyball's out of the picture and she's really going to focus on basketball and she didn't do that even though she signed Division I and she already has that scholarship, uh, she's still in there putting in the time as if she's still working for, for that, that position. So that's really cool to see and, and know as a coach that she's going to continue to push herself and, and be the best that she can. It's easy to say it, but she really just is, she's just a great kid. We've coached other kids who have thought they were special and been difficult to handle. And that's never been her. You know, she's remained humble. She remains being a good teammate. Um, she's polite to uh, all of the staff in our building. Um, she has friends outside of athletics. You know, this is not her identity. There's a lot more about her than, uh, than just basketball. She's involved in a lot of stuff too. I think that's the really cool thing with Jacqueline. And you look at her being a Division One athlete, and we've, we've had a lot of kids that have done this too. Um, you think, Sid Shetnan, um, you know, our other D1 athletes that have, have come from the past, they do more than just that sport. Um, so, you know, I talked earlier, she, she still is out for track. She does um, stuff with that. She was out for volleyball, obviously, this year. Um, you know, her freshman and sophomore year, she did cross country. So she kind of has her hand in a lot of different things, and she's not, she's not going somewhat of a traditional route that it seems a lot of kids are going, where if I'm Division I basketball, that's the only thing I do. Um, she's involved in other athletics. Being a two-sport athlete carries a lot of weight with those uh, colleges because uh, there's a couple things that you can see. You can see just raw athleticism. You know, maybe you're not the best volleyball player, but you're an athlete. Um, the other thing that you'll see is uh, how kids deal with a different role. You know, obviously she's probably our top basketball player right now but how is she going to react to being the third or fourth or eighth best volleyball player? You know, are you a good teammate when, when it's not all about you? And, uh, you know, obviously she shined in all of those aspects. She's relentless. And, uh, and that, applies, that applies not just to basketball, that is volleyball. Uh, when it's track season, she'll be all in with track. Um, that's how she handles things in the classroom. Um, it's just, it's kind of part of her DNA. She doesn't do anything halfway. Maybe another thing that kind of shows her character through the recruiting process, um, I don't have a number, but I'm guessing at least 50, maybe 80 different schools had been reaching out to her at different points in time. And a lot of kids will just blow those people off, won't return calls, and uh, you know, when they're done, they just disappear and she was very conscious about wanting to call and thank coaches, very conscious about wanting to uh, make sure that, you know, nobody left with a bad taste in their mouth. And uh, that was something as a coach that I had, I had to step in and help with. I said, you know what, let me call some of these lower schools that you're not going to, because you cannot, you cannot continue to answer the phone 47 times a week and, you know, maintain, you know, just the rest of your life. Jacqueline is quick to credit her coaches and teachers for helping her reach her athletic and academic goals. My AU coaches um, especially helped with my basketball career, um, college recruiting wise and everything. They really pushed me and, and taught me how to work for everything, um, how things won't just come to you unless you put the time in. I wanted to play in college but it was like, oh, it's just like a dream, you know. And then when I went there and they described how, yeah, you could be a college, you could be a college type player if you put the time in, if you try and do this, and if you just work on your talent, you'll be able to get yourself a college degree. But, and then also I would have to say um, Coach Parrish as well, because ever since I've been at Washington, he's made it so welcoming for me. Um, and he's really, he's really just uh, another type of role model I look to based on how he acts with us and us players on his team as well as how he treats everybody in the building how he um, goes about his way of living like he will encourage us in practice and you know um, in school make sure people are following rules and stuff like that so I also think he's also understanding guy when it comes to um, 
the whole process of my college recruiting and everything and uh, he's also understanding to us players on what we do after school, what we do outside of basketball. He's not just the basketball type um, coach, he's, you know, everything. He wants to make sure we're all okay, so. Yeah, teachers, uh, Mrs. Woundahead, because she's like been very involved in um, the Sioux Falls District and involved in different activities. And I also think she really cares about making an impact here at Washington. Um, I'd also say Doña Lupita, my um, Spanish teacher, because she's so passionate about Spanish, which is why I wanted to stick with it. She really wants the best for her students and she wants us to really excel. Um, she's the type of hardworking woman that reminds me of my mom at some times when I'm in the classroom. Mr. Stahlberg, um, he was my AP US history teacher. He made history really enjoyable. Um, because, you know, those lecture days get really boring, but he found ways to make that classroom uh, more exciting and really helped his students excel in, um, in the AP test. And to recognize her mom's role in her success. My mom and my, my brothers as well, but really my mom, no offense to my brothers, because my brother, you know, they help out. They are very understanding, but my mom is like a superwoman in, all, in this whole process. She's everything. Like, she's a supporter, she's an encourager, she's there when I need her, you know, she's there when, you know, during my hard moments, during times when I don't even feel right. My mom's there when I'm excelling in everything and I feel happy, I feel great, she's there. And so I really think she's just, she's a big impact in my life. There's no question that Jackalinga has earned the recognition she's gotten. Perhaps the only disappointment is that Washington will have to see her leave. But that doesn't mean they won't be watching her and cheering her on the whole time. You know, I was watching her. Uh, she was in one morning a couple weeks ago, and I was talking with, with Coach Parrish, and she was just doing some one-on-one -on -one stuff um, with, the, with the shooting gun and doing shots and doing moves. Um, and she does a lot of things that I have never seen from, from high school athletes um, with the basketball. So, um, you know, in my opinion, I think I could see her going to that next level even after college. About once a week in practice or in a game, she'll do something where you just, you just say, wow. You know, there's not a lot of kids that have the physical ability to do some of the things that she does. She'll leave a lasting impression here at Washington, at Texas, and anywhere she goes next. I think the biggest thing that really makes her unique is uh, she just is relentless with her work ethic. You know, we have kids who enjoy basketball, kids who are talented, and um, she has really upped the level of how hard our kids work. And, you know, as a coach, you just, you love that. If your best player is your hardest worker, everybody else has to. And, you know, in a situation with her, if she had been a kid who didn't want to work hard, she probably still could have been better than a lot of other uh, our other players, but she, uh, she just upped our work ethic as a group, and uh, hopefully that's something we can pass down for many, many years to come. I don't know about after college yet, but um, I'm, I am looking into like um, psychology, possibly, or even, um, I guess, maybe coaching, um, just based on how my high school, you know, how Jamie Parrish coaches and how um, my AU coaches coached all, as well. I mean, I think it's interesting, um, but it's obviously bigger than just, you know, encouraging players to play. It's also homework and having to look into other teams. So yeah, maybe coaching, but psychology definitely, because my mom always mentions it. She's like, oh, well, you always, you're always in the middle of everything. You always just wonder all these options. So, I mean, it might be well for you to try out. I think she's going to definitely be successful. I think she has a work ethic, um, both academically and athletically, uh, to, to excel at the next level. Um, it'll be interesting to see if it goes beyond those four years. I, I hope it does. It'd be really cool to, to see her, um, whether that's overseas playing or whether that's WNBA. Um, but I'm not sure. I guess I'm not, I'm not a, a basketball coach. Um, by nature, but uh, you know, it'd be really cool to see. I think she has that work ethic and that athletic ability. You know what? She's going to be successful. And uh, you notice I didn't just say basketball. She she will find a way to be successful. And I'm assuming basketball-wise, I know that if she goes off and finds a career, she'll be successful. Uh, she's very well-spoken, 
So she'll be a person who uh, she's already um, used her voice a little bit to stand up for civil rights and uh, for people of color. And she is uh, she's going to be successful. She'll do she'll do something great in 10 years. I don't know what it will be, but I fully expect when she comes back that uh, she'll be doing some wonderful things.